everybody i am back with another video specifically talking about ceramics i was just about to throw on my mini wheel at home when i realized i haven't answered a majority of your questions regarding ceramics and setup and i just wanted to settle all of the dust so we're all on the same page here how i got started what wheel i use currently how you can get started i'm hoping to build more of a ceramics culture on this platform so that way you're included and that way there's more clarity on how you can get started on this amazing art form that is literally just about to throw i have my overalls on but before i do a while back i took a little question box and put it on instagram for everyone to give me their questions regarding ceramics so i'm gonna go ahead and start to answer them first starting with the bigger question how i got started with ceramics i took ceramics classes in high school and i took them for three years we solely focused on hand building and there are multiple forms so there's slab where you take a flat form of clay that you've rolled out and pressed either by a hand machine or you can take a pin or literally a wine bottle anything round really and make a long slab of clay and then you can mold it to whatever shape you'd like and there's also coil where you roll like long snakes like uh long snake like forms of clay and form it and then there's also pinch where you take a ball of clay and you literally stick your thumb into it and pinch around to then form whatever you like. Those are the types of techniques that I've pretty much practiced for three years straight and really got comfortable in developing my technique <laughs> in ceramics. When the pandemic started, I then picked it back up again for my own sanity and I knew that starting up again would help me jog my muscle memory in terms of handling clay. I learned a lot in high school regarding just the language of clay and a lot of the terms along with the techniques. So with that said, I think it's super important for everyone to get a little bit of that access to uh, education regarding this art form because it does come with a lot of technique and a lot of information. And there's just some small pockets of information that are super helpful to know so you can grow your own relationship to clay. My biggest tip to get started is literally join a studio near you. Figure out if you have a ceramic studio that you can go to. I rejoined the ceramics world by joining and signing up for a membership which has open bench time and studio time. I could do hand building or I can do the wheel. Kind of just picked up where I left off regarding my knowledge of clay and then I started to mess up and learn and I think the best thing about clay is it teaches you a lot about patience and um, how to just keep going and keep trying again but if you don't have access to a studio near you then it becomes slightly more challenging because ceramics has a lot of steps first you get the clay you have to figure out what type of clay you're using earthenware stoneware porcelain and how you're going to actually fire those pieces it needs to be fired at thousands and thousands of degrees timed perfectly which is what a kiln does unfortunately you can't do it in the oven because it only gets up to a certain temperature a fraction of the temperature it needs to be fired at in order for you to actually use it and for it to be a functional or non-functional piece firing makes sure that the piece you're actually making is hard durable and will last forever there's just kind of a lot of steps which is why i just go back to the first suggestion which is find a high school you can join classes, you have college you can join classes, um, a ceramic studio near you where there's open bench time or even a membership. You don't need to take a class necessarily, but being a part of the environment where a lot of the hardware is set up for you and you just bring the clay and the glaze and the equipment and then of course your open mind to learn. Let's talk about my apartment friendly wheel. It was Christmas time in the middle of the pandemic and this is when I was just getting into learning ceramics on the wheel. Mind you, 100% of my knowledge on the wheel was just self-taught. I looked up YouTube videos if I had a question, so I have tons of footage of me, you know, speeding up the wheel super fast and pulling inconsistently and all these things that I now look back on, I'm like, wow, I'm so glad I didn't give up because now look at this amazing growth that I've achieved. Practice doesn't necessarily mean perfect, but it means you getting more and more comfortable 
slowly over time. The wheel I have is from Amazon and my boyfriend Oscar is amazing and a sweetheart and wanted me to continue getting in the jive of ceramics so he bought me this wheel. It was around $200 at the time. Now I think it's slightly less, maybe $180. It is 25 pounds so it really is apartment friendly but that's the con part of it is that it's 25 pounds. You can't really throw a lot of clay on this wheel because if you're trying to center and it's a lot of weight, you're body the actual foundation of the wheel will move around depending on the consistency of your clay it can move the wheel and that's why it's just slightly not the best idea to throw the bigger pieces on this wheel however if you're learning and you just want to get used to something spinning this is a great wheel to start off on because you can get to know ceramics with just a lesser investment and lesser commitment the wheel is pretty straightforward um, there's a lever to control the speed there is an on and off switch you can go either direction which is important um, just like anything else there's a dominant and a non-dominant side I think that is pretty much all there is to know the splash pan detaches from itself so you can clean it and wipe it the only problem that I had was I had to add an extension cord the cord itself is quite short in terms of the cleanup with this wheel, if you are at home, clay cannot go down the sink unless you have a sink trap. When clay mixes with water, it gets really thin and then the sediment rests at the bottom. You'll quickly start to learn with your bucket of water or whatever you're using that the sediment from the clay, essentially the rock, the dirt, the dust, whatever, separates from the water. So the top part will be very thin and water and then the bottom part will be this muddy thick cornstarch with water consistency you can do one of two things you can take your slit and throw it down the trash and wrap it in a plastic bag or you can reclaim it and what that means is letting the clay dry out or just adding it all to a bucket and letting it get super dry then taking a bunch of water and this system is called reclaiming where you're essentially reviving the clay back to its consistency making sure it's fully the same texture laying it out either on a slab of plaster or over wood something that's porous and can help dry the clay throughout and then re-wedging it i guess the third option would be to actually get a sink trap and there are some really creative ways to make a sink trap with two buckets and a tube in terms of what clay i personally use i use stoneware i feel like it's durable and caters to my needs regarding making pieces that are functional whether it be a cup or bowl and yes that is all for today i hope i answered most of your questions at least the big ones in terms of my mini wheel and all the tools that i use they are all available on amazon which i have actually linked below so you can just directly check it out i'm so excited to introduce you to ceramics and if you're new here i'd love to have you please subscribe and i will see you in the next one